and a good morning sports fans. Big Blue has been mighty big in the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter this season has proven to been when the Giants are at their best and at the center of it all is Bronx boy Saquon Barkley. Barkley and Daniel Jones led another comeback in the final period to get New York to 6-1 after beating Jacksonville. Final score 23-17 with Barkley and Jones at the top. The G-Men are on the move. The Giants rushed for 236 yards in the victory, 100 each from Barkley and Jones as they paced New York in a dominant fourth quarter to win their fourth straight game. New York had a scare in the final seconds, though, when Christian Kirk caught a Trevor Lawrence pass inside the one-yard line with just seconds left on the clock. But the Giants' defense prevented him from scoring what would have given Jacksonville the lead with a score and an extra point. Kirk was stopped inside the one-yard line, and the Giants held on for the win since Jacksonville had no time left on the clock. We go inside the locker room for more with a very happy Giants football team. A lot of teams will come in, do different things to make sure, you know, slow down the run game. But when that happens, uh, you know, guys got to step up and make plays, which they've been doing all year. Um, DJ's been balling, um, you know, Slade going up top, um, David, Richie, all the guys, uh, the tight ends, all those guys, you know, coming and making plays when we need them. And uh, as that continue to happen and, you know, you soften up a little bit, you can get back to just getting downhill and trusting the run. And, um, when you're able to do that when Calf and Dave and all the guys, um, you know, the coaches don't give up on the run, especially when you're behind, you know, having trust in it and, you know, them continue to trust it. Um, and for us as players, making it work. Dr. Bob Saquon looking like you in our staff games very much this early part of the season. Off to a terrific start. Jones gave the Giants the lead on a one-yard touchdown run with 531 left to cap a 10-play, 79-yard drive to put New York ahead 20 to 17. That was the Giants' first lead of the second half after holding Jacksonville to a three and out. The Giants went on a nine-play, 63-yard drive that led to a Graham Gano field goal with 104 left to put New York up 23-17. Using Barkley and Jones wore down the defense and route to the win. Barkley ran for 72 yards in that fourth quarter after being shut down the majority of the game. He comes up big when you need him most, while Jones added 50 yards on the ground in the fourth. The boy can play. The stars seem to be aligning for the Giants and the Jets on the gridiron. More on gangrene later. It's some start to the season for our football teams. On the NBA hardwood, the Knicks are putting together a pretty good start, too. The Orange and Blue won their home opener at Madison Square Garden as several players contributed in an all-hands-on-deck win over the Detroit Pistons. It was the first time we saw Jalen Brunson in a Knicks uniform at a game that actually mattered. The newly signed point guard took the court for 28 minutes and scored 17 points. He also dished out six assists, grabbed two rebounds. Here's Jalen Brunson. It's the same approach every single time I step on the court, no matter who I'm with or who I'm playing against. Um, obviously, adjusting to a new team and uh, new teammates, but the approach stays the same. You know, whatever it takes to win, um, every single time I step on the court, that's just that's how it is. Whatever it takes, like it um, doesn't matter how. Um, if you can win playing like that, that's 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 perfect. Um, uh, we're, if we're going to be a great team, we got to win you now the ugly ones. Now, when things aren't going for us or um, we're a little frustrated or anything like that, we got to win those games. But um, whenever we play like that and share the ball like that, um, we have a high success high success rate of winning the game. And everyone's just you know, playing off each other, and um, it, it's, it's contagious. And uh, the fact that we have guys who are just you know, willing to do so is just makes it that much easier. So we got to continue to have that mindset and um, continue just to keep playing together. Like Clyde likes to say, the Knicks are dishing and swishing. I was also impressed by Emmanuel Quickly, a player that I've said will be key for the Knicks this season. He came off the bench for a terrific performance at the Garden, leading the team in points with 20. More on the Knicks and their outlook in my C list. Stay tuned. We love our New York City guards. How could you not? The Bronx has had their share of dynamic playmakers over the years. For this Monday's Turn Back the Clock, we focus on one of our favorites here at BronxNet. Back in our time machine we go. This one comes from late January 2017. Check this out. Roll em. This is Bobby C. reporting from Rose Hill, where we begin our look at sports this week on the College Hardwood. The game of the week here in the Bronx, Dayton versus Fordham men's basketball, and the final game for Dayton senior guard Scoochie Smith in his hometown.
The Fordham crowd really pumped up for this 9 p.m. matchup on Tuesday night. The Rams all about the three ball in the first half. They tie this one up 39-39 at the break. But in the second half, it was all Dayton, especially down the stretch for the senior hero of the night from the Bronx, Scoochie Smith. Big, big contingent of Scoochie Smith fans in the crowd tonight. How does that make you feel to play this final home game in the Bronx? It's, it's a good feeling, you know, just to have all the fans, family and friends come support and, you know, just show their love. And I just tried to play as hard as I can tonight, show my appreciation to them. I thought he did a great job of delivering the ball on time, on target a few times for easy baskets and ones, you name it. But, um, you know, that's, that's why he is who he is. It's hard. And even 35 minutes dealing with that type of pressure the whole game, and we ask him to defend. Scoochie's a terrific player, and so not only does he lead them in scoring in Atlantic 10 games, but he's also their best assist guy, and uh, he really runs their team. So they've got four seniors in their starting lineup, and he's the leader of them. The Flyers would go on to outscore the Rams 36-27 in the second half and round to the 75-66 win. We did have a lot of confidence going into the second half, so we came out here trying to, like, okay, like this is something we can really get. Let's go, let's go for it. And then if you come up with the air, like that's so painful. <laughs> we all absolutely detest losing. With that being said, our guys did fight and claw, and Dayton made more plays than us down the stretch. But I am really proud of the way our guys competed and, um, you know, made it such a great game. Stars like Scoochie and Jalen are difference makers. In Brooklyn, the Nets have two of them. And their first win of the season flashed just that. Behind Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant's combined 57 points, the Nets secured a wire-to-wire -wire victory over the Toronto Raptors. Irving was the star of the show, scoring 30 points on 11 of 24, shooting along with seven assists. His heroics down the stretch on a barrage of jumpers carried Brooklyn across the finish line. We go back inside the locker room for more. Here's KD on the Nets' first win of the season. Yeah, it's good. I mean, teams are going scheme us and, you know, um, basically play playoff type defense against us because they, they know we can score the ball, especially Kyrie and myself. We can score from all three levels, so they got to be a little bit more creative defensively. And I feel like every team in the league is going to do that. What they usually do on defense is going to go out the window when they play us. So um, we just got to be ready for anything. This team throw a 2-3, a 1-3-1, one, one, a press, boxing one. So... Uh, it was good we was able to handle all that stuff and make plays. And they made some big shots down the stretch. I thought that was good defense, um, but they made big shots. And, um, you know, so I felt like we had the game under control, but you got to give them credit for knocking down shots, being a championship organization. Winning has certainly been a trend for the football teams of late. We couldn't have, you know, had a roundup this morning and not acknowledged gang green. The New York Jets won their fourth straight game to improve to five and two for the first time since 2010. The only downside, of course, was the loss of rookie sensation Brees Hall. He likely will miss the remainder of the season with a torn ACL. It's a devastating blow for the Jets and Hall, one of the NFL's top rookies. In six-plus games, he proved to be one of the most exciting rookies in franchise history, becoming the first Jets player since 2009 to have a rushing touchdown in four straight games. We'll try and remain as positive as we can after another big win here in the Big Apple. Here's head coach Robert Sala. Yeah, there's no quit. We don't flinch. Um, you know, they, they know that whenever... Whenever it gets rough, they know they're 60% more, and they 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 have completely bought in and believe of what they're capable of. And uh, and I and I think I, you know, like I've said, I, I just got so much faith in our group, especially when as the day the, the, the game gets deeper and deeper, I just feel like we get stronger and stronger. And uh, uh, and I think again in the fourth quarter, uh, uh, I think we all scored them six and up in there. So. It's good. It's hard to win in this league. It's a bear to win in this league. Um, and uh, to be sitting here with five wins is awesome, but uh, I've, I've seen a lot of teams start five and two and, and not finish good either. So we've got to keep our heads down, keep our, keep ourselves focused. Um, no one wins coming to town, and uh, and just got to focus. It's a good thing we have football and basketball to entertain ourselves with because baseball in Gotham, sadly is in the books. The Yankee season lasted a week longer than the Mets, but ultimately, like the Mets, it came up short of the goal, and that's winning the World Series. The Yankees' two most recent trips to the American League Championship Series ended with absolute heartbreak in Houston. The culprit remained the same this time around with the Astros celebrating yet another advance to the fall classic, the World Series. 
Winter arrives earlier than expected here in the Bronx. I'm sorry, Yankee fans. In the end, the Yankees could not get past their Houston mental block. The Astros have now ended the bomber season three times in the last six years, completing a four-game sweep this time around in the American League Championship Series. Tough, 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 tough. To the C-list for some Nick optimism, some better news. have a little bit of a different feel so far this early season coach Thibodeau is you know changing it up somewhat emphasizing up tempo basketball pushing the ball and playing with pace after the Knicks were next to last in that category last year Tibbs's reasoning for the change is quite simple he has the players to execute that style a selfless point guard and Jalen Brunson young players who thrive in the open court such as RJ Barrett and New York City native Obi Toppin both Derrick Rose and Julius Randle, two of the team's oldest players, arrived in camp noticeably slimmer and in better shape in preparation for this new style. If the next season goes as well as it could go, there is no reason that this team can't significantly surpass 39 wins. Winning 37 last season left the Knicks in 11th place, six wins behind the Charlotte Hornets and in the final game for that play in to get into the playoffs that win total from last season was with Kimball Walker and Rose running the point guard for this team those players with a combined age of 64 last season weren't playoff caliber guards we know that this season Br Brunson is at the point guard spot out from underneath the ball dominant Luka Doncic in Dallas there is a scenario where Brunson significantly improves on his 16.3 points 4.8 assists and 3.9 rebounds from last season. In addition to Brunson's possible improvement, the Knicks are a young team with several players who are breakout candidates. If all of this, or at least most of this, happens this season, I believe the Knicks will win about 43 games, a step in the right direction, and that could put them in the thick of things for one of those last playoff spots this time around. That's your look at sports. I'm Bobby Cease. More open coming back after this.